Hey everybody, it's Romania Black. We are on episode 15 of Run With The Wind. And last episode, whew, oh man, I was so emotionally just exhausted by the end of it because Prince finally made time. Haiji was about to cry. I think he did cry by the end of the episode. It was just, it was so good to see Haiji just like, to see the whole team over the moon for Prince and for Prince to finally make time. I did honestly, that was my one hesitation going into the show being like, how the heck is this going to happen? But I do appreciate, I know some people have commented that it seems like it kind of rushes to that point, but I feel like they do a pretty good job in this show of establishing that time does pass. We just aren't spoon fed that it's passed, you know, in some shows they're like, and now this week's happened and this week's happened. And, and they do a clever job in this show of showing how time has progressed in not only showing the changing of seasons, but showing like Prince and his calendar and looking ahead, showing just like just little subtle things. Like they don't hammer it over your head by saying 10 months have passed, but they do it very subtly and very effectively. And so I was okay with that because it shows how much has changed in this show in terms of these characters. And it also feels more natural. So when these characters are interacting and getting along and having conversations. It's not something that just has come out of the blue. It's something that these 10 guys being around each other for months on end have slowly progressed with their relationships. And so I really like that. I think that I thought it was handled very well. Um, I'm curious now, we're only on episode 15. We got like up till episode 23 left to do the qualifier and then the race. So I'm like, it's gonna be a long race, I'm assuming, because it's a two day event. So I'm assuming they're gonna do a lot of episodes to cover that whole race. In, when I first started the series, I'm like, oh, the season finale is going to be the race. But upon realizing in the last couple episodes just how long this race is, then it's probably going to be one of those things where we spend more time on it, which I'm okay with. But at this point, I don't know where the show is going because I was like, in the back of my mind, once we got to Prince qualifying, I was like, okay, and then there's the qualifier race and, and Decadin, and then we're done. Now I don't know, because we've got so many episodes left. I don't know what else there is to cover. So I'm really curious to know what this show is going to do now. So I'm excited. I hope you all are too. I hope you all are enjoying the reactions. Um, please feel free to comment down below. But yeah, enough talking. Let's jump into episode 15, which is where fate awaits. Hmm. I'm assuming that's talking about the qualifier and the, and the big Ekadin at the end, but we shall see. But we're going to start uh, episode 15 here of Run With The Wind here in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Let's go. Oh my gosh, you guys. Oh my gosh. So, man. So, I, this episode... That has a lot, a lot of setup. Um, I'm obviously worried about Haiji and his knee because it looked like he was icing it in the preview. So I'm hoping he jumped over that guy. But I'm like, ah, oh, dang it. Haiji being such a coach in this and such a leader in this episode. But I really love this dynamic that him and Kakaru have kind of like, they've kind of switched from the start of the series. Kakaru is now the more optimistic, like looking forward to like, we can do this. And Haiji showing reservations and showing nervousness, which makes so much sense on Haiji's end because this is Haiji's fourth year. So this is his last chance to ever do this race. So of course, Haiji's like been like, we could do this guys, we could do this. And they all got qualified and everything was great. And now the reality is hitting Haiji, I think, where he's like, crap, now it's the actual race and we've got to actually do this. And it's like, um, okay. <laughs> like, here we go. Um, and so I like that line. He says that the, the closer you get to something, the more vulnerable, the closer you are to your goal, the more vulnerable you get. And that's so true for Haiji. He's like, this has been his goal for four years and he's finally getting to it. And the closer he gets to that actual goal, the more reality is hitting him and the more vulnerable he is being like, I'm second guessing myself. Like, what if we didn't do enough? What if we didn't run enough? What if I did, was too soft on them? And this whole time, Haiji's had a brilliant strategy. Like he's taken all the experience and wisdom from the coach. It makes sense. The coach is like, I'm old. I'm not going with y'all, but here's my advice. He's done all the right things, but of course he's second guessing now because he's like, we're, we're here. If we don't make it, is it my fault? And it's like, ah. Oh. 
And they've dedicated so many months and so much time and energy to this feat that it's like if they don't make it, you know, you can't really put blame on anybody, but you know Heidi's going to put a lot of blame on himself. And so I like Kakaru just kind of calming him down. And what what a role reversal of Kakaru being the calming presence. And that moment, there were so many moments that were so wonderful. The moment where Kakaru goes and ties Prince's shoe for him because he's so nervous. I'm like, they have made such a wonderful friendship with each other. And it's because they're so similar. They're so passionate about the things they enjoy. And they're able to like find that that common ground. Like Prince and Kakaru's friendship is so pure and wonderful. I love it so, so much. Um, and then that moment where Haiji and Kaku are keeping pace and Haiji's like, just go. I'm like, my heart was like, sent. <laughs> I was like, this is amazing. <laughs> um, I'm really worried about Haiji though. Not for the qualifier maybe, but for, but for Ekaden, I'm like, if he hurts that knee and they've made it this far. <sighs> and then of course, the whole thing with Musa makes so much sense now that Musa was like one of the twins. Hannah's in love with one of the twins. And it's not weird because Hannah's in high school, but the twins are like 18. They're fresh out of high school. So it's not weird, I don't think. But I'm like, which twin does she like? And does the other twin know that she only likes one of them? So it's like, mm. I like, I appreciate Musa being the romantic, but I'm like, is that going to come back and bite us? That our, our resident manager maybe likes one of our run runners? I don't know. But man, what a cool setup for the qualifier. That is a hard race. That is a hard, hard race. And the fact that they're all keeping up pace and doing that is so crazy. I uh, I feel like we're they're going to get through by the skin of their teeth. And so when the twins were like, we're going to win the Ekaden, and Cocker was like, did you just say we're going to win? Stop. <laughs> um, the other thing is the parents' reaction. Obviously, like like King and Shindo's parents seem really on board with it. I felt bad for Musa because it seems like he was like, oh, that's cool that their parents are like hearing all about it. And it seems like Musa, I feel his plight because, you know, his parents probably have no clue what he's doing um, in terms of that. And then Yuki seems to have like a negative, his parents have a negative response to it, which makes sense because Yuki was all against it at the start. So I'm sure his parents are in the same boat that he was at the start of the series. But man... Just, we didn't see uh, Fujioka's team there, so we didn't see them. So, but they clearly are there. So I'm curious to know what we find out with them. I'm curious. Hmm. I don't know, but oh y'all, that was that was pretty intense. I don't know if I can wait to watch episode 16 because I kind of want to know what happens. But um, I'm curious to know what you all thought of the episode. I thought there was a lot of character building, a lot of plot set up, a lot of things setting up for next episode with the qualifier. I was not expecting the episode to end right then and there. Wasn't expecting that. When it just cut, I was like, no, are you kidding me? So I don't know. I may not be able to wait another week. I may have to go ahead and watch episode 16 to find out what happens. But I'm curious to know what you all thought down below. Please make sure to leave a comment. Um, please, no spoilers. But I hope you all enjoyed the reaction. And yeah, have a wonderful week. Stay safe. And I'll be back next week with more Run With The Wind.